Richie Witt of NBCDFW.com with Armin in the back on 104.5 The Team. Tomorrow, your Thanksgiving Day, the Cowboys host the undefeated Panthers. And Richie, I know the line has changed now, but when it opened, the Cowboys were a favorite. Is Tony Romo being back that big of a factor? Isn't that crazy? Yes. Uh, I mean, for years and years and years here in, in Dallas-Fort Worth, I had to champion the fact that Tony Romo is a top 10 quarterback. And I took so much heat for it and criticism. And, oh, you're an idiot. He chokes. He blah, blah, blah. And now, one game back, and all of a sudden, his team, 3-7, and seven, is favored over a 10-0 and 0 team. <laughs> it, it, he's gone from the most disrespected quarterback in the NFL to one who's probably getting too much credit, right? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's ridiculous. I would think so. I mean, does he have that much of an impact on these Cowboys that we can look at them as a favorite against the 10-0 and Panthers? That's a two-pronged question, and let's take the first part. Is, does he, is he that big of a factor to the Cowboys? Absolutely, yes. I mean, obviously, it goes way beyond them looking just abysmal and losing seven games in a row. Last week, he, he goes under center – and it's just a different team, a different feel. Uh, Terrence Williams resurfaced. He'd been totally gone. There's Bryant caught a touchdown. He completed passes to eight different receivers, something that the, the Cowboys under Brandon Whedon and Matt Castle just didn't do. They were, they were just All they did was check down and dump off. And now teams have to respect, oh, my gosh, they actually might throw a deep ball. We can't bring an extra a backer, an extra safety to the line of scrimmage and, and crowd the box. So that allows the running game to get going. Darren McFadden had 130 yards last week. He looked better. Uh, you know what? Jason Garrett coached better. He went for a fourth and one in the first quarter. You think he would do that with Brandon Whedon? There's no way. He's just more confident. And, again, the big thing is the defense, which uh, it's been banged up this year. It's been bad at times, but it looked like last year's defense, and that's because with Romo on the field, with a running game back in play, the Cowboys held the ball for 38 minutes. They ran 68 plays to only 41 for the Dolphins. That, as you guys well know, that's how you make your defense better. You keep them off the field. And Romo is an indirect or direct uh, factor in every one of those advantages. Richie Witt of NBCDFW.com, at Richie Witt on Twitter. What about the guy he's handing the ball to? Do we finally believe in run DMC, Darren McFadden? Uh, yeah, by, by default. I mean, uh, I, we were, I was just looking today, uh, Joseph Randall, but who was the Cowboys starter in training camp, and he was the, the chairman of the committee, if you will, that was going to replace DeMarco Murray. He got arrested again today in Kansas, so the Cowboys, I guess, didn't want an enabler with him. They cut their ties at the right time. But, but yeah, because uh, Lance Dunbar gets hurt, and, and Joseph Randall's a knucklehead, and all of a sudden now it's McFadden, who was supposed to be one of three, he's one of one, and he ran well last week. He ran hard, he made good cuts, he finished runs, and again, the big thing was he ran against a seven-man front, not an eight- or nine-man front, because teams respect Romo in the past, and it just makes McFadden a better runner. And, yeah, I mean, I don't think you can deny at this point he's got a little bit left of the tank. Now, the, the other storyline of this game, Greg Hardy gets to play his former team. He, he says the right thing publicly. It's just a nameless, faceless opponent. But then he texts Mike Tolbert and says, uh, you know, he's very excited to prove them wrong. They should never have let him go. What, what is the, what is, who is Greg Hardy? Are, are we okay with Greg Hardy in the NFL right now, especially the Cowboys? He's a nut. He's an absolute nut. And I don't want him uh, as my neighbor. I don't want him on the same church pew as me. Uh, I don't really want him at the same restaurant as me, even if I'm out of town, but I want him on my football team. And, and it, I've gone back and forth on this because he, what he did was disgusting and abhorrent, and, and you, wouldn't, you wouldn't condone that on any level, but he's the Cowboys' best defensive player. He gets to the quarterback, and if you can separate player from person and just say, all right, for 60 minutes on Sunday, I, I can put everything else aside – then, yeah, if you're a Cowboys fan, you need him. And, and don't think he thinks the Panthers are a nameless, faceless opponent. He's had this game circled, and when Greg Hardy has his mind put up to it, he's going to be an absolute monster on Sunday. And I, I, I'll tell you right now, Cam Newton is elusive. He's probably the best athlete on the field. Greg Hardy's going to get to him at least twice. I, I just know it.
Richie Witt of NBC DFW at Richie Witt on Twitter. And Richie, you and I did a show in Dallas. We're part of a show together for five years, and I understand you're not very good at math, but let me... (laughs) I'm horrible at math. Thank you for bringing that up. Let me give you this (laughs) equation, all right? Does Romo's return equal Cowboys make the playoffs? I don't think so. And and I know... They play in the – well, not the worst division. It's the AFC South. They play in the second-worst division in all of football, and your New York Giants are not a good football team. They have so many weaknesses, so many holes. If the Cowboys would have just won one game, if you look back at their seven-game uh, losing streak, you're like, okay, they lost to Tampa on a freaky play. Uh, they lost two overtime games in that time. They lost a one-point game to Seattle, which they missed a field goal. If they just win one of those games – then Romo can lose one of these last seven, and they can get to nine and seven. I don't think nine and seven wins this division. I bet you guys agree with me. But but I don't think Romo, again, as good as he is and the biggest difference he makes, and Armin, you saw it when you were here in Dallas, he'll make the bonehead play. He made two of them last week, and he makes he tries to do too much, and that's what keeps him from being a top three, two or three quarterback in this league. He'll do it again. He'll do it in a bad situation. They'll lose a game, and their margin for error because of that losing streak is zero. And no, I got them finishing seven and nine, making a valiant run. But I think it's going to be eight and eight, or even nine and seven is going to win this division. I don't think they can win it. They upset Cam Newton tomorrow. I do think that. Wow. Which is crazy to say, but I think it for a couple of reasons. And when in doubt, I usually go with a more desperate team. I don't think there's any doubt that the Cowboys are more desperate. They know that they have no margin for error. The Panthers are ten and zero. They've been rolling. Now I think they can see the finish line. And I don't think they're all about, you know, let's go 16-0 and make history. I think they think, man, we're the, we're the crappy Panthers, and we're about <laughs> to clinch a division. I, I just don't think Cam Newton is the kind of pedal-to-the-metal leader that Tom Brady is where he doesn't, he doesn't put up with anything. I think he'll let, he'll let up a little bit. And I think the Panthers know, you know what, we can lose a game or two and still win our, 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 